Wayne from howtofish.com.au. I'm down at the Barwon River at Barwon Heads fishing this morning. I got here at first light because the, the wind is expected to build pretty heavily today so I don't know how good for fishing that will be or how, how easy it will be to fish properly. I love getting down to the water at first light. I, the day is always full of promise. Also, that transition from dark to light is usually a feeding time for fish. So those early hours are really important for catching fish. Well, as per usual, the fish usually start off small. I'm getting small bites after I've had about three casts to get some burley in the area and uh, getting small bites. So nothing that's going to hook themselves. So it's just a, um, a matter of it's sort of waiting until you get the activity and then sometimes having to hold your rod so you can strike into them. I always to... say to bring a rag with you or a, a small towel just to you know, keep your hands clean when you're sort of uh, mucking around with baits and fish and stuff like this. It, uh, it really does help. It makes things more convenient. It helps to keep your gear clean. Although it helps to wash it too. I, uh, I've had this for about three sessions without washing it and uh, smells so fishy now I could almost use it as burly. But Always good to have these around. Every now you get a break in the, in the wind and it's beautiful. At certain times of the year, you get a lot of small fish coming into the water. This, uh, this Trevally here is indicative of the, the, the fish that were actually stealing my bait. Lots of them, and even though they're quite small, their broad bodies make them feel bigger than they really are. But you can see the wind blowing it all about there. That cast resulted in this fish, and yet you can see it blowing all over the place. The wind was building up to the point where I couldn't even keep the fish still. It was bad. It was really hard to feel bites, and every now and again, the wind would drop a little bit, which would mean that you could feel what was going on. You could feel it through your rod tip. Struck into this fish, felt a little bit better than those small trevally I was getting, uh, and when I brought it in, it it was a, a reasonable sized mullet. So there was some reasonable fish about, nothing really big, but still a bit of fun on a windy day. Another cast and another small trevally. Now, as you can see, it's, it's got a lot of weed on it, as does the burley cage, and that had only been in the water for a couple of minutes. If you lift your, your tackle in that water for more than about 10 minutes, it would be absolutely covered. So what would happen is that the bait would be totally covered by weed so the fish couldn't find it. The, any of the weight you had, your sinker would be covered in weed. It would be quite a job to even get it out of the water. So it was a challenge to fish that day. You had to make sure you got bites as soon as possible, otherwise you wouldn't get bites at all. I was getting fish quite quickly every couple of minutes and what I was doing was I had changed the the hook itself and I'll tell you about that a little bit later change the hook so that I can actually hook fish better now mullet like this are quite difficult to to hook they'll pick up your bait and drop it making it difficult to connect with them what I did do is change the style of the hook so that it would hook better unfortunately it also meant that the fish would come off luckily this one came off when I got it out of the water onto the bank, so I was able to keep this one. The fishing conditions on the day were really interesting. The wind was blowing heavily from right to left, 
but there was an outgoing tide so the water was flowing and quite fast from left to right. This caused a great deal of turbulence in the water, there was weed everywhere, it really made things difficult. I continued to catch fish but I'll be honest there's not many conditions that stop me fishing but on the day it was just too windy, I, I had to call it quits. I'd had some reasonable success in getting some fish in. I sort of enjoyed the experience, but when you're getting sand blown into your mouth, when you're getting weed all over the place and your gears blowing everywhere, it's not all that pleasant. So this was the last fish and I called it a day. Well, that was just so difficult fishing. <laughs> the winds were getting up to 45 kilometers an hour. The gusts were even heavier than that very difficult conditions to fish into but I really wanted to see if I could catch in conditions like that I mean it's not something that you want to do it's not I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't choose a day like this to go fishing but when when the conditions are like this and you it's the only day you have to go fishing then there's a couple of things you can do one is obviously you've got to have enough weight to cast out to the spot you need to so just uh, having the right weights there and you've you have to go up in slightly heavier gear like like is not going to work in these conditions when there's a lot of weed in the water so I was using my bass red uh, fishing rod I just used the the medium heavy top section so that's a that's a heavier stiffer top section um, and with my on a reel my series 3000 reel that I was using all I did is I used uh, that comes with two spools I was using the heavier spool with slightly heavier line so I was fishing five kilo line today into this which is heavier than I normally go but because you're pulling in weed all the time you've got to have something strong enough otherwise you'll break your line off the other thing I was doing is anticipating where the the bait was going to go with the, the wind so as I cast in I had to try and cast slightly right of where I was going to fish so that the wind would blow it into position I just wanted to show you something that I've been doing lately as well to, to help make the fish hook themselves. What I've been doing is I've got a running burly cage, but what I'm doing is I'm, so what I normally happen is that I would have a stopper here, I would have the hook tied up here, and this burly cage would be free running. But what I've done is I've put a second stopper, so it limits how far that burly cage can move, which means that when the, the fish pulls the burly, uh, pulls the line, the burly cage will be on the bottom. It'll actually pull line through that swivel to that point. So it gets enough movement there so it feels confident with the bait in its mouth. But then when it gets to that point there, it can go no further before it feels the weight of the burly cage. And it's causing the fish to hook themselves. You can experiment with the distance between these two. You can make them a little bit longer if the fish need somewhere to play or if they need more line to play with. Or you can reduce the distance between these two. And sometimes what you can do by just using these stoppers, they're just a, a barrel with a spike in it. You can just basically adjust it so that there's virtually no play whatsoever in that burly cage. So the moment the fish pulls that line, that hook will go into its mouth, there's nowhere to play. But sometimes they do need a little bit of, of uh, movement to get some confidence. Sometimes they do need a, a space between those line stops to get some confidence. But that's been working so well. And here, this burly cage, this particular burly cage, is my 70 gram, the new 70 gram burly cage. It's square, it's got a base on it, a mesh base on it, so that it holds burly and it's flat bottomed so it's heavier it's larger than the others and it's flat bottom so on those estuaries and on areas that have plenty of flow this holds the bottom much better and doesn't move and it has more payload it carries more burly to be distributed but the the base of that being closed of course the top is open but the base being closed holds the burley for longer in more flowing water and it works very very well one of the things I've been doing lately, and it really has been working well, is to modify my hook. I always keep my hooks nice and sharp, but one of the things I've done recently with a pair of pliers, I've actually squeezed down the barb of the hook. So I've made it a smooth point, almost barbless hook. What that means is the point seems to go into the mouth of the fish much easier. With the, the barb, because it flares out, 
it takes a little bit more force to get that into the skin of the fish, into the fish's mouth, into the flesh, uh, to, to actually then secure a hold. If you push that down, the hook goes in further, faster and easier. It just means that when you actually reel in, you've got to keep pressure on your line to keep the hook in its mouth because they can through the, the hook a bit easier. But the fact is, I've actually lost fewer fish with no barb than I have when I've had a barbed hook. So it's just something you might want to try to see if it actually helps your hook up rate. Uh, I've been very, very happy with that and I've been doing it for quite some time. The other great thing is it makes it much easier to get the hook out of the fish's mouth when you want to return it. Anyway, look, if you've enjoyed the video, please give us a thumbs up. If you're interested in the gear, the burly, burly cages, the rods and reels techniques, and a fishing lesson, go to my website, howtofish.com.au. See you next time.